This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. The transition year is over. The season has come to an end. Unbeaten at home, the Monarchs were 1-4 against FBS opponents, including their first ever FBS win as they move up to Conference USA next season. Physically overmatched against North Carolina, Old Dominion left Chapel Hill with an uncharacteristic 60-point loss. We're going to talk about that, look back at the entire season, and look ahead to the future. The season finale of the Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. And Coach, I don't want to dwell on the Carolina game, but it was an uncharacteristic loss. Mm -hmm. And you asked that the game be shortened there mm -hmm. at the end. A lot of fans were bewildered. So take us mm -hmm. through that disappointing day. Yeah, I, I knew going into this game, Bruce, that we were physically beat up, and, and I felt fairly good coming out of the first quarter, only down 14 to 13. But from that point, everything just unraveled. We went down there with 25 players injured, five out for the season, three starters on defense. And through the course of the second and third quarter, when it really got out of hand, we lost seven players in that time. DJ Simon, our middle linebacker, dislocated his ankle. He had to have surgery on Monday, and we were already depleted at linebacker, Bruce. In this game, Richie Staten, who probably shouldn't have played. Richie's freshman linebacker, outstanding, going to be a great player, probably shouldn't have played. He ended up having to play 57 snaps. And at one point in the third quarter, I tried to take him out, and he got mad at me. I tried to put in Kaniya Anderson, freshman defensive end, who we'd moved to linebacker that week. And, and I love Kaniya for it. Tried his best in that game. And Richie said, Coach, you got to put me back in. That's not fair. To Kanaya. We also lost in this game. Nate Barnes dislocated his kneecap. He's going to have to have surgery. I mean, it's just an awful way to end your senior year. Seven total injuries in this game in the second and third quarter. And that's when I made the decision, Bruce, and it was all my decision. I take uh, full responsibility for that decision. Any criticism should not go at anybody else, players, anybody. It's right at the head coach. I decided at that point to ask that the game be shortened, and I wanted to try to minimize any more injuries that would happen at that situation because we were just depleted on defense. We asked Aaron Evans, a backup corner, to play outside linebacker in this game. He played 77 snaps, did as well as he possibly could be expected. But at, at this point in the year, we, we were just decimated and depleted, and, and I take responsibility for that decision. All right, thank you, Coach. Moving up to Conference USA so quickly was a bold move right. after only four seasons. Now, if we've mm -hmm. got the math right here. Mm -hmm. You had to bring in 49 right. new players. What, about right. 22 of them yeah. were freshmen. Was yeah. it too much to ask the players that mm -hmm. you had this season mm -hmm. to take on these FBS teams? It, it certainly looks like it after the North Carolina game, but I don't think it was, Bruce. I think it's something we needed to do as a program. It, it's something I wanted to do. So again, I take responsibility for it, uh, but I really feel like we grew from this. Our players wanted this challenge. As you know, we've got some competitive football players on that team, and they wanted this challenge. And when I look back at this 8-4 and four record, it proves to me that it was the right thing to do. We'll grow from this, and we'll be much better as a program through those five FBS games on the road and that experience. All right, next year you take on 11 FBS teams. Will the Monarchs be ready for that? I think so. I think this experience helps us. When you look at those five FBS games, Bruce, obviously we would have loved to have had somebody play us at home, but it wasn't going to work. We, we were the last guy at the table when it came to scheduling for 2013, and the best we could do was to get those games on the road. But that experience from playing at East Carolina, at Maryland, at Pittsburgh, at Idaho, at North Carolina. When you look at next year's schedule, and, and we'll know it in February, the Conference USA, but now we're prepared to go to North Carolina State. We're prepared to go to Vanderbilt. We've had that experience, and our players have grown from it this year. It's going to make us a better team. All right, always the optimist. You said Monday that you consider this transition season a success. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? Wow. What a success. I could not be any more excited, other than the way this last game ended, to be 8-4, and four, to be undefeated at home, the first time we've ever done that, to get our first FBS win, and to gain that experience from those road games this year. This was as challenging as it could have been for us on the road with 49 new players, 33 first-time players. I feel like this was a great success, and this is going to catapult us into the offseason. And the good thing? That comes from losing the way we did in that last game. 
We met with all of our players on Monday. Those 79 that are coming back, they're more motivated than they've ever been for anything in athletics in their life. All right. The star of this team has been, is, and will be quarterback Taylor Heineke. Your thoughts on his season and what do you expect from him next year? Wow, what a season. He broke eight more school records this year. He passed for over 4,000 yards this year. And right now, Bruce, he's one of the top 15 quarterbacks all time in FBS history in terms of for passing for over 10,000 yards and rushing for over 1,000. There's only been 15 all time, and he's got a full year to go. With, with the players we have surrounding him, and there's some talent, eight of 11 starters back on offense, he could end up as one of the top three quarterbacks in the history of college football next year. Can't wait to see him. Still to come, Coach Wilder has one last chance to answer your questions. It's the final installment of the Coach's Corner, and we're going to check in with some of the hardest working members of the staff as Chris Rackley visits with the Monarchs Equipment Managers. All right, we talk about the players and you coaches, but you can't have a successful college football team without a dedicated and talented Ooh, support right staff. That. Chris Reckling wraps up our season of the Old Dominion Coaches Show with that story. Ever wonder what it takes to outfit a college football team? It costs about $1,200 to outfit a game day player from head to toe. Daniel Cornier is the head athletic equipment manager at Old Dominion. Cornier, along with top assistant Jeff Gordon, oversee four graduate students. Their list of equipment runs close to 5,000 pieces. Helmets, shoulder pads, jerseys, pants. Knee pads, girdles, compression shorts. Coaches gear, football, everything field equipment wise. At chin straps, speed locks. T-shirts, cleats. Uh, shower shoes. So much gear, check out the shoe room, complete with extra helmets, shoulder pads, game day gloves, and of course, shoes. This is DJ shoe from one year, in size 18, DJ Morrell. The Monarchs have four different colored jerseys with matching pants. Throw in five different colored socks along with two different colored helmets and decal schemes, and that translates to 160 different uniform combinations. We haven't worn the same combination in, in, the, in a game during the year the past two years. With the season now over, Cornier and Gordon are busy going through inventory and making a new order sheet for next year. With so much equipment, they have to have a system. There's an app on our phone to where we can issue a player equipment at, from any spot of the field, and that tracks where each piece of equipment goes. If it goes to a player, if it goes to a staff member, if it's still in the equipment room. While most every day involves some type of laundry, these unsung heroes can take the equipment show on the road or even across the street to Foreman Field. Both Cornier and Gordon are graduates of Old Dominion and take pride in the success of the Monarchs football program. If we do everything right, we don't get noticed, and that's the way we try to keep it. We want to be as low-key as possible and make sure that the players look good on game day. In Norfolk, Chris Reckling for the Old Dominion football show. Thank you, Chris. Coach, the equipment managers don't receive the accolades that the players or you coaches do, but man, yeah. are they important. Oh, they're, they're awesome. I mean, they're, they're in there every day, and, and you could see in that piece, they just love Old Dominion University. Danny, Jeff, along with Scott Foreman, our, our truck driver, who went all over the country, and all those students, just, I'm so proud of those guys and so grateful, Bruce, for the work they do. All right. Still to come, one more round of the Coach's Corner as well as the priorities of the offseason. That's next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Time to turn it over to the fans. It's time for the final installment this season of the Coach's Corner. First question is from Tony in Norfolk, and it's does the success of the University of Texas San Antonio in its first season right. in Conference USA give you some optimism heading into your first year in the league? Yeah, it sure does. When you look at what they're doing this year right now, they're 5-2 and two with one game left against Louisiana Tech. They're already 6-5. and five. They're bowl eligible. They've got a shot if they win this weekend to be in the Conference USA championship championship game definitely gets us excited about that. Great question. And are they a first-year team in Conference USA like you'll be next year? They are. Yeah, this is their first year, and they've been independent. But they just joined this year. All right. We'll see about a bowl game yeah. next year for us. <laughs> next question from Danny in Chesapeake. Is there a position that you will be focusing on more than others during this season? 
Yeah, the number one position that we'll be focusing on, Danny, is that linebacker position. We were decimated this year with injuries and some other situations that come up. But because this is only our second FBS recruiting class, we've got to focus on every position to continue to improve this team. Thanks for the question. All right, with no games until August, Coach, give us your priorities of the offseason as we make the move to Conference USA. Yeah, the number one priority for this football program right now, that's everybody, is to get bigger, get faster, and get stronger. Coach Martin and Coach Mack got to take over in the weight room, improve all our schemes in all three phases. We've got to get better in all three phases this offseason. There'll be a lot of research done by the coaches. And number three, earn our way from the bottom to the top in Conference USA. That'll be the mindset. In our final team meeting, our players were so excited on Sunday to start thinking about competing for a conference championship again. Thanks for the questions. As we wrap up the season finale of the Old Dominion Football Show, Coach, the mm -hmm. defense struggled much of the season. What is the plan to change that by next fall? Well, first of all, what we've got to do is continue to improve ourselves personnel-wise, and we will. We'll have another great season in recruiting. We've already got a lot of commits on that side of the ball, and we had 12 freshmen play this year on defense. Those players are going to be better. We'll also look at the scheme. Coach Nagy and I talked Sunday morning right after the North Carolina game about some things we want to do differently. There was only so much we could do this year with all the newness of the players. We're going to look a lot different on defense next year. Everything's on the table, Bruce, whether it's 4-3, 3-4 schemes, different blitz packages. We're going to look at all of it, and I'm really excited about that. One final question. I assume the recruiting has already begun. Boy, sure. <laughs> Has it ever with at this point? I, I can't talk names, but we've got 19 players already committed. We've already had a lot of players visiting Bruce during the season because our best time to have kids on campus, as you know, is home games. The atmosphere is awesome. And all of our coaches will be out on the road Sunday, me included, all across the country for the next two months. Can't wait. A lot of travel. And okay, on behalf of producer Brian Parsons, Nathan Epstein, Chris Reckling, our director Kyle Bloom, and his staff, and most importantly, everyone associated with the Old Dominion football program uh, and our very generous sponsor, Dennis Elmer and Priority Automotive, who kept the commercials few so we could talk more. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, you've been very candid. Yes, sir. And uh, thanks for being with us for our third year. You got it, Bruce. And for you, for Brian, for everybody here, what, what a professional organization this is. I'm so proud to be part of it. And to our, our sponsor, Dennis Elmer and Priority, just unbelievable job. Thanks to everybody. This has been a lot of fun. All right. The offseason seems to get shorter every year. We'll see <laughs> you sure back here in the fall of 2014. Can you imagine? Oh, We'd can't be wait. saying this for another here season we go. of the Old Dominion Football Show. Good night, everybody. Thank you.